Peter Ferdinand Drucker was an Austrian-born American management consultant, educator, and author, whose writings contributed to the philosophical and practical foundations of the modern business corporation. He was also a leader in the development of management education, and he invented the concept known as management by objectives. Introduction Drucker's books and scholarly and popular articles explored how humans are organized across the business, government, and non-profit sectors of society. He is one of the best-known and most widely influential thinkers and writers on the subject of management theory and practice. His writings have predicted many of the major developments of the late 20th century, including privatization and decentralization. The rise of Japan to economic world power the decisive importance of marketing, and the emergence of the information society with its necessity of lifelong learning. In 1959, Drucker coined the term a Euro O knowledge worker, and later in his life considered knowledge worker productivity to be the next frontier of management. Peter Drucker gave his name to three institutions, the Drucker Institute and the Peter F. Drucker and Mizutoshi Ito Graduate School of Management, both at Claremont Graduate University, and the Peter F. Drucker Academy. The annual Global Peter Drucker Forum in his hometown of Vienna, honors his legacy. Biography Peter Drucker was of Jewish descent on both sides of his family, but his parents converted to Christianity and lived in what he referred to as a liberal Lutheran Protestant household in Austria-Hungary. His mother Caroline Bondi had studied medicine and his father Adolf Drucker was a lawyer and high-level civil servant. Drucker was born in Vienna, Austria, in a small village named Karl Scraben. He grew up in a home where intellectuals, high government officials, and scientists would meet to discuss new ideas. After graduating from Dar Paragraph Bling Gymnasium, Drucker found few opportunities for employment in post-World War Vienna, so he moved to Hamburg, Germany, first working as an apprentice at an established cotton trading company, then as a journalist writing for Der Österreichische Volkswagen. Drucker then moved to Frankfurt, where he took a job at the Daily Frankfurter General Anzeiger. While in Frankfurt, he also earned a doctorate in international law and public law from the University of Frankfurt in 1931. In 1933, Drucker left Germany for England. In London, he worked for an insurance company, then as the chief economist at a private bank. He also reconnected with Doris Schmitz, an acquaintance from the University of Frankfurt, and they married in 1934. The couple permanently relocated to the United States, where he became a university professor as well as a freelance writer and business consultant. In 1943, Drucker became a naturalized citizen of the United States. He then had a distinguished career as a teacher first as a professor of politics and philosophy at Bennington College from 1942 to 1949, then 22 years at New York University as a professor of management from 1950 to 1971. Drucker went to California in 1971, where he developed one of the country's first executive MBA programs for working professionals at Claremont Graduate University. From 1971 until his death, he was the Clark Professor of Social Science and Management at Claremont. Claremont Graduate University's management school was named the Peter F. Drucker Graduate School of Management in his honor in 1987. He established the Drucker Archives at Claremont Graduate University in 1999. The archives became the Drucker Institute in 2006. Drucker taught his last class in 2002 at age 92. He continued to act as a consultant to businesses and non-profit organizations well into his 90s. Drucker died November 11, 2005 in Claremont, California of natural causes at 95. He had four children and is the grandfather of Nova Spivak, one of six grandchildren. Work and Philosophy, Early Influences Among Peter Drucker's early influences was the Austrian economist Joseph Schumpeter, a friend of his for their Euro unregistered trademark S who impressed upon Drucker the importance of innovation and entrepreneurship. Drucker was also influenced, in a much different way, by John Maynard Keynes, whom he heard lecture in 1934 in Cambridge. A year OEI suddenly realized that Keynes and all the brilliant economic students in the room were interested in the behavior of commodities, a year Drucker wrote, 
a euro while I was interested in the behavior of people a euro over the next 70 years, Drucker a euro unregistered trademark s writings would be marked by a focus on relationships among human beings, as opposed to the crunching of numbers. His books were filled with lessons on how organizations can bring out the best in people, and how workers can find a sense of community and dignity in a modern society organized around large institutions. As a business consultant, Drucker disliked the term a euro a euro, a euro though it was often applied to him. A euro oe I have been saying for many years, a euro Drucker once remarked, a euro oe thought we are using the word a euro guru a euro unregistered trademark only because a euro charlatan a euro unregistered trademark is too long to fit into a headline a euro as a young writer, Drucker wrote two pieces a euro one on the conservative German philosopher Friedrich Julius Stahl and another called a euro oe the Jewish question in Germany a euro a a euro that were burned and banned by the Nazis. The business thinker, Drucker's career as a business thinker took off in 1942, when his initial writings on politics and society won him access to the internal workings of General Motors, one of the largest companies in the world at the time. His experiences in Europe had left him fascinated with the problem of authority. He shared his fascination with Donaldson Brown, the mastermind behind the administrative controls at GM. In 1943 Brown invited him in to conduct what might be called a political audit a two-year social scientific analysis of the corporation. Drucker attended every board meeting, interviewed employees, and analyzed production and decision-making processes. The resulting book, Concept of the Corporation, popularized GM's multi-divisional structure and led to numerous articles, consulting engagements, and additional books. GM, however, was hardly thrilled with the final product. Drucker had suggested that the auto giant might want to re-examine a host of long-standing policies on customer relations, dealer relations, employee relations and more. Inside the corporation, Drucker a Euro unregistered trademark S Council was viewed as hypocritical. GM's revered chairman, Alfred Sloan, was so upset about the book that he a Euro who has simply treated it as if it did not exist, a Euro Drucker later recalled, a Euro were never mentioning it and never allowing it to be mentioned in his presence a Euro Drucker taught that management is a Euro or a liberal art, a Euro and he infused his management advice with interdisciplinary lessons from history, sociology, psychology, philosophy, culture and religion. He also believed strongly that all institutions, including those in the private sector, have a responsibility to the whole of society. A Euro OE the fact is, a Euro Drucker wrote in his 1973 management, tasks, responsibilities, practices, a Euro OE thought in modern society there is no other leadership group but managers. If the managers of our major institutions, and especially of business, do not take responsibility for the common good, no one else can or will a Euro Drucker was interested in the growing effect of people who work with their minds rather than their hands. He was intrigued by employees who knew more about certain subjects than their bosses or colleagues and yet had to cooperate with others in a large organization. Rather than simply glorify the phenomenon as the epitome of human progress, Drucker analyzed it and explained how it challenged the common thinking about how organizations should be run. His approach worked well in the increasingly mature business world of the second half of the 20th century. By that time, Large corporations had developed the basic manufacturing efficiencies and managerial hierarchies of mass production. Executives thought they knew how to run companies, and Drucker took it upon himself to poke holes in their beliefs, lest organizations become stale. But he did so in a sympathetic way. He assumed that his readers were intelligent, rational, hard-working people of goodwill. If their organization struggled, he believed it was usually because of outdated ideas, a narrow conception of problems, or internal misunderstandings. Drucker developed an extensive consulting business built around his personal relationship with top management. He became legendary among many of post-war Japan a Euro unregistered trademark as new business leaders trying to rebuild their war-torn homeland. He advised the heads of General Motors, Sears, General Electric, W. R. Grace and IBM, among many others. Over time he offered his management advice to non-profits like the American Red Cross and the Salvation Army. 
his advice was eagerly sought by the senior executives of the Adler Investment Company, a private initiative of the World a Euro Unregistered Trademark S multinational corporations to promote investment in the developing countries of Latin America. Drucker's writings, Drucker's 39 books have been translated into more than 36 languages. Two are novels, one an autobiography. He is the co-author of a book on Japanese painting, and made eight series of educational films on management topics. He also penned a regular column in the Wall Street Journal for ten years and contributed frequently to the Harvard Business Review, the Atlantic Monthly, and The Economist. His work is especially popular in Japan, even more so after the publication of, What if the female manager of a high school baseball team read Drucker a Euro unregistered trademark S management? a novel that features the main character using one of his books to great effect, which was also adapted into an anime and a live-action film. His popularity in Japan may be compared with that of his contemporary W. Edwards Deming. Peter Drucker also wrote a book in 2001 called The Essential Drucker. It is the first volume and combination of the past 16 years of Peter Drucker's work on management. The information gathered is a collection from his previous findings, the Practice of Management to Management Challenges for the 21st Century, this book offers, in Drucker's words, a coherent and fairly comprehensive introduction to management. He also answers frequently asked questions from up-and-coming entrepreneurs who tend to ponder the questionable outcomes of management. Key Ideas Several ideas run through most of Drucker's writings, decentralization and simplification. Drucker discounted the command and control model and asserted that companies work best when they are decentralized. According to Drucker, corporations tend to produce too many products, hire employees they don't need, and expand into economic sectors that they should avoid. The concept of knowledge worker in his 1959 book The Landmarks of Tomorrow. Since then, knowledge-based work has become increasingly important in businesses worldwide. The prediction of the death of the blue-collar worker. A blue-collar worker is typically a high school dropout paid middle-class wages with all benefits for assembling cars in Detroit. The changing face of the U.S. auto industry is a testimony to this prediction. The concept of what eventually came to be known as outsourcing. He used the example of front room and back room of each business. A company should be engaged in only the front room activities that are critical to supporting its core business. Back room activities should be handed over to other companies, for whom these tasks are the front room activities. The importance of the non profit sector, which he calls the third sector. Non government organizations play crucial roles in the economies of countries around the world. A profound skepticism of macroeconomic theory. Drucker contended that economists of all schools fail to explain significant aspects of modern economies. A lament that the sole focus of microeconomics is price, citing its lack of showing what products actually do for us, thereby stimulating commercial interest in discovering how to calculate what products actually do for us. From their price. Respect for the worker. Drucker believed that employees are assets not liabilities. He taught that knowledgeable workers are the essential ingredients of the modern economy, and that a hybrid management model is the sole method of demonstrating an employee's value to the organization. Central to this philosophy is the view that people are an organization's most valuable resource, and that a manager's job is both to prepare people to perform and give them freedom to do so. A belief in what he called the sickness of government. Drucker made non-partisan claims that government is often unable or unwilling to provide new services that people need and or want, though he believed that this condition is not intrinsic to the form of government. The chapter The Sickness of Government in his book The Age of Discontinuity formed the basis of new public management, a theory of public administration that dominated the discipline in the 1980s and 1990s. The Need for Planned Abandonment Businesses and governments have a natural human tendency to cling to yesterday's successes rather than seeing when they are no longer useful. A belief that taking action without thinking is the cause of every failure. The need for community. Early in his career, Drucker predicted the end of economic man, and advocated the creation of a plant community, where an individual's social needs could be met. He later acknowledged that the plant community never materialized 
and by the 1980s, suggested that volunteering in the non-profit sector was the key to fostering a healthy society where people found a sense of belonging and civic pride. The need to manage business by balancing a variety of needs and goals, rather than subordinating an institution to a single value. This concept of management by objectives forms the keynote of his 1954 landmark The Practice of Management. A company's primary responsibility is to serve its customers. Profit is not the primary goal, but rather an essential condition for the company's continued existence and sustainability. A belief in the notion that great companies could stand among humankind's noblest inventions. Criticism of Drucker's work, C.L. James, Rea Dunayevskaya and Grace Lee Boggs criticized Drucker in their 1950 text State Capitalism and World Revolution, the Christian humanists will join with the labor bureaucracy to keep the mass of workers in their place at the base of the hierarchy in production. The Wall Street Journal researched several of his lectures in 1987 and reported that he was sometimes loose with the facts. Drucker was off the mark, for example, when he told an audience that English was the official language for all employees at Japan a Euro unregistered trademark S. Mitsui Trading Company. And while he was known for his prescience, he wasn't a Euro unregistered trademark T always correct in his forecasts. He predicted, for instance, that the national Euro unregistered trademark S Financial Center would shift from New York to Washington. Others maintain that one of Drucker a Euro unregistered trademark S core concepts a Euro a Euro OE management by objective A's a Euro a Euro is flawed and has never really been proven to work effectively. Critic Dale Kruger said that the system is difficult to implement, and that companies often wind up overemphasizing control, as opposed to fostering creativity, to meet their goals. Drucker's classic concept of the corporation criticized General Motors at a time when it was, in some ways, the most successful corporation in the world. Many of GM's executives considered Drucker persona non grata for a long time afterward. Alfred P. Sloan refrained from personal hostility toward Drucker, but even Sloan considered Drucker's critiques of GM's management to be dead wrong. Awards and Honors this article incorporates information from the equivalent article on the German Wikipedia. Drucker was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by U.S. President George W. Bush on July 9, 2002. He also received honors from the governments of Austria, including the Grand Silver Medal for Services to the Republic of Austria in 1974, the Grand Gold Decoration for Services to the Republic of Austria in 1991 and the Austrian Cross of Honor for Science and Art first class in 1999 and Japan. Drucker was the honorary chairman of the Peter F. Drucker Foundation for Nonprofit Management, now the Leader to Leader Institute, from 1990 through 2002. In 1969 he was awarded New York Univacitia Euro Unregistered Trademark S Highest Honor, its presidential citation. For his article, What Makes an Effective Executive? Harvard Business Review honored Drucker in the June 2004 with his seventh McKinsey Award a Euro the most awarded to one person. Drucker was inducted into the Junior Achievement U.S. Business Hall of Fame in 1996. He received 25 honorary doctorates from American, Belgian, Czech, English, Spanish and Swiss universities. His 1954 book The Practice of Management was voted the third most influential management book of the 20th century in a poll of the Fellows of the Academy of Management. In Claremont, California, 11th Street between College Avenue and Dartmouth Avenue was renamed Drucker Way in October 2009 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Drucker's birth. Books by Drucker, 1939, The End of Economic Man, 1942, The Future of Industrial Man, 1946, Concept of the Corporation, 1950, The New Society, 1954, The Practice of Management, 1957, America's Next Twenty Years, 1959, Landmarks of Tomorrow, 1964, Managing for Results, 1967, The Effective Executive, 1969, The Age of Discontinuity, 1970, Technology, Management and Society, 1971, The New Markets and Other Essays, 1971, Men, Ideas and Politics, 1971, Drucker on Management, 1973, Management Tasks, 
Responsibilities, Practices, 1976, The Unseen Revolution, How Pension Fund Socialism Came to America, 1977, People in Performance, The Best of Peter Drucker on Management, 1978, Adventures of a Bystander, 1980, Managing in Turbulent Times, 1981, Toward the Next Economics and Other Essays, 1982, The Changing World of Executive, 1982, The Last of All Possible Worlds, 1984, The Temptation to Do Good, 1985, Innovation and Entrepreneurship, 1986, The Frontiers of Management, Where Tomorrow's Decisions Are Being Shaped. Today, 1989, The New Realities, In Government and Politics, In Economics and Business, In Society and Worldview, 1990, Managing the Non-Profit Organization, Practices and Principles, 1992, Managing for the Future, 1993, The Ecological Vision, 1993, Post-Capitalist Society, 1995, Managing in a Time of Great Change, 1997, Drucker on Asia, a dialogue between Peter Drucker and Isor Nekorchi, 1998, Peter Drucker on the Profession of Management, 1999, Management Challenges for 21st Century, 2001, The Essential Drucker, 2002, Managing in the Next Society, 2002, A Functioning Society, 2004, The Daily Drucker, 2008, The Five Most Important Questions, Other Drucker Publications, Monographs, 1932, The Justification of International Law and the Will of the State, 1933, Friedrich Julius Stahl, Conservative Political Theory and Historical Development, 1936, The Jewish Question in Germany, Contributing Writer, 1961, Power and Democracy in America, 1969, Preparing to Morrow a Euro Unregistered Trademark S Business Leaders Today, 1979, Song of the Brass, Japanese Painting from Sanzo Collection, 1988. Handbook of Management by Objectives Bill Redden and Dennis Ryan, 1991, The Rise of NEC, Miscellaneous, 1977, An Introductory View of Management, 1977, Management Cases, 2006, The Effective Executive in Action with Joseph A. Maciorillo, 2006, Classic Trucker, 2008, Management Revised with Sujol Garaya, see also, Global Peter Drucker Forum. Peter F. Drucker and Mizatoshi Ito Graduate School of Management, Management by Objectives, References. Further reading, Tarrant, John C. Drucker, The Man Who Invented the Corporate Society, 1976. ISBN 0-8436-0744-0. BT, Jack, The World According to Peter Drucker, 1998. ISBN 0-684-83801-X, Flaherty, John E. Peter Drucker, Shaping the Managerial Mind, 1999. ISBN 0-7879-4764-4, Edershim, Elizabeth. The Definitive Drucker, 2007. ISBN 0-07-147233-9, Cohen. William A. A. Class with Drucker, The Lost Lessons of the World's Greatest Management Teacher, 2008. ISBN 978-0-8144-0919-0 Weber, Winfred W. Q. Lovingen, Gladius Peter F. Drucker's Next Management. New Institutions, New Theories and Practices, 2010. ISBN 978-3-9810 1,228-6-5, Stein, Guido. Managing People and Organizations, 2010. ISBN 978-0-85724-032-3, External Links, Drucker Archives in the Claremont College's Digital Library, The Window in the Claremont College's Digital Library, The Drucker Institute, The Peter F. Drucker Mizatoshi Ito Graduate School of Management, the Drucker Exchange, The Drucker Business Forum, Drucker and Enterprise Strategy, Francis Hesselbein Leadership Institute formerly the Peter F. Drucker Foundation for Nonprofit Management, PRISM Center of Learning in partnership with the Drucker Institute.
Prism Center of Learning in partnership with the Drucker Institute. Peter F. Drucker, A Biography in Progress.